So misinformation is something that we do in our lab, and um, some of us in our lab come from a space and, uh, where it's closely related, or historically we have been part of the hacktivist community. So it came to idea that uh, misinformation and trolling and memes and all of that started at some point um, where uh, people who abide to the, to the Levi's hacker ethic uh, started to um, uh, figure it out what uh, to do with the internet as unregulated and unknown space, something that is a little bit difficult to rectify when the internet came back, this it's 1984 book. So um, something, it's, um, something was new and something that was free to be appropriated and uh, shared and uh, used in uh, different uh, ways. And then it, um, people who were quick to realize the potential of internet realized that not, they had a chance to organize an ethical way of doing things uh, in the internet uh, and to try to fend off internet from any neoliberal appropriation of it and using it in uh, very much commercial aspects. So therefore, um, the hacker or the early hacker community wanted to establish uh, several tenants among which uh, are the, the street that access the computers should be unlimited and total and that information should be free and uh, that no authority should be trusted and the standardization should be uh, promoted. So and that uh, gave a way to um, development where the hacker community bifurcated into two tracks. One of them became the hacktivists, most of which uh, work you know, they kind of act without impunity. And one is uh, the hashtag activism where it's more so utilizing the internet space and the virality of, uh, of social media in particular to, to mobilize um, into the physical space while the hacktivists usually acted uh, on political causes and they used uh, hacking cyber means to cause damage or defacement or denial of service um, and all that. And uh, culture-wise, um, these two, let's say, tracks developed in a way that collectivization was something that was important for hacktivists. That's why and where they started those lolcats and rickrolls and memes on 4chan um, where uh, the, the hashtag community revolve around hashtags and uh, <clears throat> and uh, civil mobilizations for uh, for movements and for uh, for resistance. So um, we we are we we had presence in both of them, but we we focused on the hacktivists because the hacktivists usually created a lot of um, legal problems. And early on, uh, they, there was. Um, there was some kind of uh, a bad rap about them. Uh, rest in peace, Kevin Mitnick, uh, last, uh, last week. Um, but the, the, the problem became that whatever they did as an inefficient or maybe some sort of offshoot from the general mainstream use of internet uh, became apparent that it has been hijacked on a high, uh, on a high level by, some, uh, uh, by someone who is not necessarily abiding to the hacker's ethics uh, tenets. So what, what usually happened is that it was not just someone, who, it's not, it was not a new player onto the, onto the hacktivists or the, um, the hashtag activism space, but it's someone who actually tried to steamroll and uh, completely appropriate everything that has been used so far to maintain the democratic vision of the, of the internet. So um, what happened is that um, all of a sudden the, in, uh, the hashtag activism uh, way of doing things and the hacktivism way of doing things had no match or no response to the massive appropriation of the internet by state-sponsored um, outfits who pretty much uh, very uh, in a very muscly way, try to try to uh, establish turf dominance and completely hijack the the narrative on uh, social media or on forums or everywhere else, and uh, create uh, division and so discord. So uh, that kind of um, that kind of disturbance uh, uh, incentivizes or motivated us to start and thinking and talk to some of our old friends and old friends of our old friends, and to ask them about what do they think about this? Because trolling and memes was something that was used as part of the, that alt culture uh, in the beginning, and now it's all of a sudden weaponized uh, against, uh, against the mass. So um, we, we devised the study, um, and we asked three questions, uh, three such questions 
to ask what do they think of misinformation, because hacktivists, if you remember, they started using misinformation in an example against the Church of Scientology. So, but that way of doing misinformation and this way of doing misinformation um, seems to be different, so we wanted to know what do they think about it, what do they think it's appropriate way of responding to someone who is actually trying to uh, maliciously um, appropriate the, the internet turf, and uh, what do they think this, uh, where this goes. So, we tried to get uh, and recruited a balanced sample of 22 um, participants. Um, uh, all of them are pretty much uh, well established uh, into the hacktivism. We tried to recruit and ask people who were act active way before 2014 where this appropriation uh, happened. And um, we, we had um, more than an hour probably <laughs> on average or, or less interviews with them where we talked about uh, all of these aspects and how do they feel and what do they think, um, where and how should they, uh, we respond to misinformation. And this, uh, our findings are more towards um, offensive response to it. It's not something that uh, our participants said that it's a job of the social media or the government or someone else to do it, but they kind of felt that there is some sort of ethical responsibility for the hacktivist community to respond actively and offensively to, um, to this uh, appropriation of the social media and online, all, online space. So um, they acknowledged that the trolling and memes, and memes were, were hijacked for nefarious uh, um, purposes. They acknowledged that they, they'd done it before. I, I included some quotes for you if you like, and there are quotes into the paper. Uh, but they, what they see it's now that they, someone else harness automation and that people usually keep on trusting whatever they see on, uh, online without even asking, asking questions about it. And they realize that, uh, uh, that that's not uh, necessarily leading to, um, to a good outcome. So um, they also, it, it was inevitable to talk about uh, politics with them and they obviously realize that uh, the division, it's the easiest vehicle to maintain uh, this kind of um, appropriate internet for nefarious purposes, for, uh, for division. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and they, for, for in response to that, they responded that they should do the same things that they should have done it before, as, for example, leaking or doxing um, and deplatforming in order to maintain the ideological aspect that they are here to maintain uh, the democratic vision of the internet, which in uh, these terms and in the current state of affairs on, in the online space and social media uh, certainly doesn't resemble uh, what, what they maintained decades, um, decades ago. Uh, we've also asked them about what they do. Some of them responded they are actively doing these kind of things. They actively help operations uh, that uh, counter uh, some misinformation efforts and some dissemination of alternative narratives. Um, we also ask them the third question so that, that we ask them is what do they think should be done beyond just uh, what hackers would do because not everyone is a, is, is a hacktivist and not everyone could do this without impunity or not everyone can know how to uh, respond and hide their tracks. Um, most of them, interestingly, were uh, adamant that this should be included in educational aspects and in schools in the United States as something that it's not necessarily included for them. It looked like something that has been omitted in the past and that should be, uh, should be included now. And that, um, interestingly enough, they also thought that they could use a help from psychologists or everyone else to, uh, to wage some kind of hybrid response, offensive response back to misinformation, not necessarily just removing from platforms or uh, deleting accounts. Um, and in the end, we, um, I would like to, to, to mention, like, this, was a, this was an initial study for us to, uh, to gauge the pulse, to understand what uh, people who usually started this and uh, are still active, what do they think? Um, this doesn't grant any, any approval or condones anyone else for their own to actually do that or if they have, I don't know, docs and, and leaks and caches of documents of some of the um, outfits that spread uh, misinformation or who are sponsored by, by states. Um, but this was more of to see that there is an alternative way or there is a um, critical mass that might want to engage 
on the very same turf that has been um, hijacked. Um, we didn't talk to uh, people who are um, active or who have been active or who have started um, hashtag uh, activism, but that's our next uh, study that we'll talk with them because, though, uh, because the hashtag activism also has been hijacked, as you've seen before. I think I've shown um, a screenshot of one of the famous um, one of the famous personas that was uh, a Russian troll, the uh, cultural appropriation of Jaina Abrams that hashtagged and co-opted a, ha um, a hashtag against, um, against the, uh, the crisis of refugees. So um, this is our talk in a nutshell. I'm happy to talk more about this. Uh, I'm not happy to reveal my hacktivist part, but... <laughs> So I'm, uh, yeah, that's, uh, oops, where do we go? Okay. So that's uh, our, our talk, and I'm happy to answer any questions, or if you can see me around, I'm more than happy to talk more about um, our interviews and our interactions and our future work. So thank you. Okay, we've got time uh, for questions. And again, please, there, please go to the Slack channel to this session, and you can start a thread there and pose your questions here, even after the, the sessions. So I'm going to ask a question. So your paper has a really nice ethics section, I thought, to kind of talk about these issues. I mean, there are times we've seen in history, and I don't know, can you comment up with current misinformation where hacktivists, uh, their activities can harm maybe innocent individuals yes. or, or bystanders? Do, did, did you glean anything from your study in terms of do we... Do we have any ways to mitigate or respond to that, either through the law, or do we turn the tables on the hacktivists, or do you have any, any insights into that? So challenge? hacktivist community is, is um, well, it's, it's quite huge, and there are many disagreements within it. And of course, we would, the, there are many harmful things of doing this, right? Gamergate and places like, like that. Um, we tried to recruit and talk to people who were openly against, um, I guess, misinformation as a state activity. So because the hacktivist community acted against states at the beginning. Historically, uh, they acted against something that they perceived as an encroaching authority. So, and they, they saw misinformation as part of it. So they were united in that part. There was not necessarily a consensus or of the order of the, the ways of doing it and who might get Burned, but most of them acknowledge that they would not engage into it if that causes or might cause an indirect harm to uh, to someone else. So that's uh, that was the, the, they were open into into that. They know how harmful it can be. Um, in the paper, there are some citations that there were people who have been harmed by other hacktivists. So they do very much understand the implications of actually doing offensive things that could have uh, ramifications beyond just the, the, the state sponsor outfits that spread this information. But we, we, we talked about that. It's, we, we included it in our ethics session. It, um, there is a, a consensus about it, but we could not advocate for that overall, that everyone will abide to, um, to that. Because one of the, one of the um, <clears throat> our participants mentioned that the very act that they proposed, the offensive act, is kind of Bushido violation of, of their code. So within them, that could cause a problem. But more like uh, overall, the do no harm, that anything that could can result in a harm, both in the cyberspace and in the physical space, was off limits. Okay. Thank you. Let's thank our speaker. And, uh...